God is good. Yeah, there we go. All the time. God is good. And all the time. God is good. And all the time. God is good. And all the time. Do you believe that tonight? That God is good all the time? Rather, we're going through the good times and the bad times. God is still good. Amen? We serve a good God. Amen. Uh, stand with me tonight, if you would. This isn't a Catholic service. We're not going to make you sit up and, or stand up and sit down 15 times. Amen. Just come on, lift your Bibles up in the air. If you got your Bible on your phone, just make sure you lift that up. Whatever you got your Bible on, lift it up tonight. Amen. You got your Bibles in the air? Amen. Say, this is my Bible. I can have everything that this Bible says I can have. I can do everything this Bible says I can do. I am blessed and highly favored. My body is healed. And I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise here tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Our God is a good God. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Praise God of all of the praise, all of the honor. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord here tonight. You know, as we were talking, as Pastor Steve was up here and he was talking about praise, I got to tell you, if you don't like praise, then you're not going to like heaven at all. Because heaven is going to be filled with praise and worship unto our Lord, which is much deserving. Amen. And if we did that 24 hours a day, well, you know, there's going to be no time up there. But I'm telling you, it'll be all right with me. Amen. Because you know what? The Lord has delivered me. He has saved me from, from a hell that I don't have to go to. And I am thankful. Amen. So I'm telling you, I'm excited that I just get to just not only praise God down here, but someday I will praise the Lord in heaven. Whew, man, that is something to think about. Thinking about heaven. This has nothing to do with my the message tonight. But... You know, have, have, have you ever honestly thought about, I mean, we've read what heaven is like in the word, but I, I think until we truly uh, get up there, we will we'll never have a real, uh, true revelation uh, on what heaven is just going to be like, how beautiful, how great it's going to be. Uh, I, I'm excited, amen. You know, I, I'm excited to go. If it's if it was t t tonight, I'd be ready. I'd be ready to go. But I tell you what, you know what? There's work here to do on earth, amen. And until that trumpet blows, till he comes, amen. I mean, I'll be ready whenever he wants us to go, amen. But there's got to be. There's a lot of work here on earth to do, amen. Yeah. Praise God. Well, tonight um, I'm going to be talking about a subject that makes people really squeamish and uh, especially believe it or not it, it even happens in Pentecostal type churches uh, tonight the, the name of the message is called have you been filled come on look at your neighbor say neighbor, neighbor. have you been filled amen. amen tonight we're going to talk about the baptism in the Holy Spirit amen now don't run out of the back please okay all right here's what I wanted here is my goal tonight I want to really break this thing down, all right? Uh, I, I want to talk about why, why do we have the baptismal Holy Spirit? What is it for? You know, what we do, what, you know, what, what this promise is all about to us. Amen. Um, it is a promise. I said it is a promise. Amen. And, uh, but again, I want to break this down that even a caveman is going to understand this tonight. Amen? Uh, you know, this isn't something so deep that we can't understand it. Amen? Amen. Come on, somebody. I said this isn't so deep that we can't understand it. It's, it's very plain uh, in what the Word of God says. Can someone say amen tonight? Amen. amen. So what I want to do, uh, this is going to be a teaching tonight, all right? We're going to teach, all right? So if you got your pen and you got your paper, amen, this is a good night to take notes. This is a good night for you to, uh, to write some things down. And, and, and I just want to say, for those of you who already have this gift, 
Don't think, well, I guess my night's done. I can keep my Bible closed. I don't have to worry about anything. Can I just say that we are the carriers of what this word has to say? So even though we may have this, you know what? There's going to be some people around you that don't have it. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I'm telling you, I mean, there, we, have to, we have to be uh, disciples, right? We have to teach. Amen. We have to disciple others. Well, how are we going to disciple if we choose not to know the information? You see, we're going to go from being church attenders and church members and, and visitors to people who know something on how to get someone else saved and how to get someone else to understand what this is. Because let me just say here tonight that there is a lot, there, is, there are so many things out there right now uh, as far as this subject. There, there are some things that are really good and there are some things that have gone to the extremes. Can somebody say amen tonight? Uh, we, we, I'm sure all of us here tonight, if I gave you a microphone, everybody in here can say, you know what, I know I've seen people take this thing to the absolute extreme to where it wasn't God. Amen. And can I just say out there, out there that every, every gift and everything that the Lord has for good, that the enemy has his giftings and his things that he does, that he tries to twist things and manipulate things and to make things bad. Amen? The enemy has that. For everything that God has, the enemy has something as well. Amen? To try to disrupt and to try to deceive. He is a deceiver of the brethren. Amen? So, but we have to understand something tonight. This, what I'm going to be talking about tonight is of God. Oh, come on. Y'all got a little weak here in that. I said, this thing is, is from the Lord. It's a gift to us. You don't have to have it. Amen? If, if I had this Bible, and if, if I said, Braxton, I want you to have this Bible. You know what? He doesn't have to take it. It's, no, you can have it. It's a gift if I was going to give it to him, but he has a choice on whether he wants to receive it or not. This is the exact same thing with the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You can receive it, or you can say, you know what? I don't want it. And you know what? That's perfectly fine. Amen. Did you know that there are born again believers who do not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit and they're still going to make it to heaven? All right. Okay. See, I'm going to talk about why it's a good thing. And I know, you know, I see I'm already getting off subject here, but, you know, it's, it's tough to see in even many Pentecostal churches that many Pentecostal churches have just totally, you know, just swept this under the rug. It's a good thing, church. It's a good thing. If it's if it's not if it wasn't a good thing, I wouldn't believe in it. I surely wouldn't be up here teaching on it tonight. Amen. God is good. Amen. And 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 God has these gifts and promises for you and I. And it's up to us whether we want to receive them or not. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Well, remember the gospel is is here to go beyond the four walls. Of, the, of a building. How many knows this isn't the church? You, you drove to a building, but you did not drive to a church. It's what we say is a church, but we are what make up the church. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're here to make disciples. Amen. We're here to carry the good news. This is a part of something, of, of our, our, what I can say is our arsenal to help us to, to be that, to be those witnesses, to be the carrier of the gospel. And if you, if you know, gospel is just the good news. I just want to say now, this thing is good news. Amen? This is good. I am, I am so glad. I am so satisfied. I am so just excited that this gift was given to the body of Christ. Amen. So... Tonight, I want to start off by answering some questions that you may have concerning the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Amen. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through the Word. Y'all going to have to flip through some scriptures here tonight. But you know what? I just help your neighbor out. Say, neighbor, it's going to be okay. 
Come on, tell your neighbor. Say, you're going to do some flipping in the scripture tonight, but it's going to be all right. Amen, because we need it. Hallelujah. There's so much scrutiny over this. And also there is so much ignorance over this. Lack of knowledge. That's, I'm, not, I'm not here just to, to say that, you know, that people are ignorant. For, it's, they have a lack of knowledge. And sometimes if you have a lack of knowledge on something, it's easy to talk bad about it. It's just because you're not informed. And tonight I just, I know I keep saying this, but I just, I really want to drive this home to where we can understand why we have what we have. Why do we, you know, why are we called Pentecostals? What, what happened? But can I just also say that this gift isn't for just a Pentecostal church or a, a church of God or an assemblies of God or a word of faith or care, you know, whatever it is. It's for anybody who wants it. It's not for just a select number of people. It's good for the body of Christ. Amen? All right, so let's question one here. What is the purpose for the baptism of the Holy Spirit or in the Holy Spirit? Same way. And there are three answers that I, that I got out of this. Answer one is it's in to empower the believer for service. Can someone say amen? amen. To empower the believer for service. Uh, the second reason I believe uh, what the purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is, is to have a deeper walk with the Lord. Amen. And the third thing I would say tonight that, that is a, a, a reason for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and that is to enhance your prayer life and to take it to a whole new level. Amen. Your, once, you have, once you have received this gift from God, your, your prayer life um, will get so much greater. It will get so much deeper. It doesn't mean that you're better than your other brother who doesn't have it, okay? But what it does mean is that we have that deeper prayer life with God. Hallelujah. Come on, say, somebody say, God is good. God is good. Praise the Lord. Did you know that there are spirit-filled Baptist churches and Baptist people? Amen, I can say that. That there are Methodists and there are even Catholics who have received this. The, the, the prerequisite, and I'm, not, I'm getting ahead of myself again, but the prerequisite for this is to be born again. That's the only. That is the only prerequisite to have this is that you must be born again. You must know Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. As Savior. Amen? So let's go to the Word tonight. Hallelujah. So turn with me, please, in your Bibles to Luke chapter 24. <coughs> Praise God. Whenever I went, was at Rama, we had our, our, one of our professors who was teaching on the Holy Spirit. He said, get out your Bibles and get out your mints. Amen. Because you'd hear mints and, and oh, sorry, inside joke. Uh, Luke chapter 24 and verse 49. Praise you, Jesus. If you're there, say amen. amen. 24, 49 in Luke. And the word of God says, and behold, I send the promise. Everybody say promise. promise. Of my father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. You see, what we're talking about here is a promise. It is a promise of God. Praise God. Acts chapter 1. Just go up 2 and you'll find it. Amen. Go up 2 books of the Bible and you'll find Acts. You'll bump right, right into it. Acts chapter 1 and verse 4. Everybody doing all right so far? All right. Acts chapter 1 and verse 4. And the word says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise, uh-oh, he said promise again, of the Father, which saith he, 
You have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Hmm. Go down to verse 8. But you shall receive power. Someone say power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be, what? Witnesses unto both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Notice he said you're going to be a witness. Why did he say that? He said that because this promise was to empower the believer for service. There was going to be something that happened being endued with power that was going to separate the men from the boys. Amen? Hallelujah. And this is all leading up to the day of Pentecost. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's important to know that these gifts... Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Let me talk. Hold on. Hold on. If a Christian has received the baptism in the Holy Spirit... There are also spiritual gifts that are available to us. Someone say spiritual gifts. Amen. Amen. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians. Y'all still doing all right tonight? Going to give your fingers a workout tonight. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I hear those pages turning tonight. If you're there, say amen. amen. All right, we're going to start in verse 4 of chapter 12, 1 Corinthians. And it says, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Hallelujah. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Every man. Praise God. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. To another diverse kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the, and the selfsame Spirit... Dividing to every man severally as he will. Praise God. We have these different gifts. There's the gifts of the Spirit. But can I just say something here tonight? That the gifts of the Spirit, whenever someone receives uh, a gift of the Spirit, it is not just for that person, but it's for other people. If, if, if God gave me the gift of prophecy, it's not for me. It's for other people. Amen. It's for other people. If God gave me or gave you the gift of healing, obviously, now can I just say here tonight, you are not a healer. You can't heal a headache. But the Lord can. And he uses you and empowers you to do so. But it's not your power. It's his power. You see, we got to be careful when we say that because sometimes whenever, you know, we see different preachers and, and, and teachers and stuff and they have things happen and people get healed and people get delivered. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, preacher. Thank no, 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 no. It ain't me. It's him. You see, we can, we can get into trouble whenever we say that, yes, I healed you or yes, I delivered you or yes, I did this and yes, I did. We didn't do anything. Amen. All we were was the conduit for God to do the work. <clears throat> And that's what I'm telling you, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm very big on the body of Christ. This is kind of like my thing is that, that we need to be uh, fishers of men. Amen. We need to be disciples. We need to go out beyond the four walls of this building to reach other people for Christ. You'd be surprised at how many people just want to come in here and just hear a teaching and go home and that's it. There are, there are many people out there that don't want to do anything for God. That's a freebie. Amen. But we serve a big God. And he empowers his believers. That's us. To do his work here on the earth. So that way we don't have just Jesus out doing the work. 
He has us. He has us to do his work. Look at your neighbor and say, he has you to do his work. Look back at him. Tell him, say, I'm talking to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the other purpose of the, of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to enhance the prayer life of an individual. Did you know that? Did you know that your prayers can be enhanced? Did you know that you can bring life and power into the prayers that you're praying? Thank you, Jesus. We're in 1 Corinthians. Let's keep going forward here. Let's go, praise God, to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. Some of y'all are saying, man, I know he's going to go in this many scriptures tonight. Ephesians chapter 6. And we're going to read in verse 18. And the word of God is talking about the armor of God and everything. And, and it says here that praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. In the spirit. You see... And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about speaking in tongues here in a little bit. But as you're praying in the Spirit, your prayer life and your prayers are enhanced. And they're empowered by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Question. Where is the Holy Spirit? He's in the church. He's in the body of believers. Amen. He's in us. He's not just floating around somewhere. He is in the, the body of Christ. He is in us. You see, that's a sacred cow that we have to kill. Because you'd be surprised. Some people think he's just floating around somewhere. That's not where the Holy Spirit's at. The Holy Spirit is in you and is in me. When you make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes inside of you to dwell inside of you. Amen. So whenever we, you know, and I'm not here to knock any, any song or anything, and we, you know, pray, oh, come Holy Spirit. You know, he's already here. We don't have to pray for him to come because he's here with us, because he is in us. That's a sacred cow right there, man. I'm telling you, it's a sacred cow. Some of y'all will get that later. Amen. It's a sacred cow. That's all I got to say. That thing needs sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? Amen. He is in you and me. Hallelujah. Whenever he does work, he does work through us. We are the body of Christ. Amen. The Lord gave us the authority. Amen. He gave us these things. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is inside us. To do these things. When we talk about the gifts of the Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit that's within us doing these things. Again, we are the conduit for God to work. God is not going to work without humanity. You know, sometimes people get hung up on the craziest of craziest things. You know, there was, you know, there's people who can get hung up on angels doing things. And you know what? Thank God for angels and all that they do. But you know what? They are not here to replace people. They are not here to replace the body of Christ. They don't do what we do. Amen. They're here to, with, to, to be with us, to minister. and they're, they're, They have a function. But they're not here to save people. They're not here to heal people. They're not, they're not here for these things. That's God is using us to do that. Yeah. Whew, praise God. Turn back to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. You won't have to go far once you go backwards. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 8. I have that one up there. Yeah, look at that. Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. And if you can't find it, it's right there. 
It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirm for infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Huh. Let me read that again. It says, For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. So it says we don't know how to pray for things right. Not that we don't pray, but we don't know how to pray the right things sometimes. Can someone say amen? amen? You'd be surprised some of them crazy prayers and God's going, oh my gosh, are you serious? They're really praying for this? I mean, I can't imagine being God for 15 minutes and hearing some of the prayers that are coming up to heaven. I got to be honest. There are some crazy insane I've heard I, I can't imagine I mean because it's for him it's the grand scale I mean I've heard I've heard some crazy crazy stuff uh, just just as long as I've been a Christian I can't imagine some of the crazy things that God's had to hear I'm just saying okay let me go on we're in verse 26 it says but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Hallelujah. Verse 27, I'll just read this as a bonus. And it says, And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what he is in mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So if the Holy Spirit is in us, and he knows what the will of God is, and he is making intercession and praying through you, why? Because, again, where is the Holy Spirit? Is he floating? No, he's in us. So you see, he uses us to pray and intercede for the things here on earth. So you now see, this is going to get us in trouble here because if the Holy Spirit is in us and he's using us to pray and intercede and this earth is as bad as it is, whose fault is it? Could you imagine if we prayed like we were supposed to the things we could see on this earth? We're looking for a different president. Or you may get upset because of a political thing. Baby, just get on your knees and start praying. It doesn't matter who's in office. Amen. I know that he directs the country, but he doesn't direct the earth. Amen. It's the saints. Whenever we pray, whenever we get on our knees, whenever we intercede, amen, it's churches getting together and seeing the power of God and seeing those things whenever we come up to the Lord with intercession. I don't know why this world is the way it is. It's the Christian's fault. It's the body of Christ's fault. Because whenever you look in the book of Genesis... In the beginning of Genesis, God gave Adam dominion over all things. And whenever he fell and when Jesus came, Jesus restored that which Adam lost. So you see, as a body of Christ, us believers, we got that dominion and authority back. So whose fault is it that things are the way it is? It's this guy's. It's y'all. It's all of us. We ain't got no one that we can't point a finger at our president, our governor, nothing. We got to start getting on our face. That's what changes things. Did you know whenever they had the, uh, uh, the Brownsville revival, did you know that police would take criminals to the revival? Yeah. They didn't take them to the jail. They took them to the church. You see what I'm saying? You can't tell me that prayer and intercession and the power of God can't change things. Mm -hmm. There was a revivalist by the name of Charles Finney. And he, would, he had prayer teams that would invade a city with prayer weeks before he even showed up because he knew the power of prayer. Imagine that, that you had 20 people just going into a city one week or two weeks or three weeks before you got there to speak. Think about them demons and devils that would be humbled, powerless. Imagine if we 
would start getting on our face and we would start seeing things change in this city. You hear what I'm saying? It's on us, church. It's on us. We got to stop worrying about other people and we got to get focused on what we got to do. What's our mission? I'm saying some stuff here tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Someone say God is good. Hallelujah. The third reason I talked about the Holy Spirit, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, why it is important is because it will give you a deeper walk with God. Now let me say something very uh, upfront and honest here tonight. It does not make you better than any other believer. There's, you know what, and it's crazy because some, help me Lord, there are some people out there that have a different air about them because they speak in tongues and, and they look down to people who don't. And I'm here to tell you, scripturally speaking, amen, that it doesn't matter. I mean, it, when it comes to that, we should never look down on anybody. Because it's the blood of Jesus and the faith in Jesus Christ on what he did gets you to heaven. It's not speaking in tongues. Can someone say amen? amen. Say it a little louder. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Go up one more. I know we was in 1 Corinthians. Go there one more time. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Go one book up and you are right there. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to read verses 13 and 14. If you're there, say Amen. And the word of God says, Wherefore let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. We are control freaks. I have to know what's going on 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. I got to know. You know what, there are some things that you're going to pray out in the spirit that you are clueless about. But can I say here tonight, it's okay? Look at your neighbor and say, it's okay that you're not in control. Ooh, someone just got a revelation tonight. Some of y'all, you couldn't say that in front of them normally, but tonight it's all right. It's okay that the Holy Spirit uses us to pray and we don't have to know exactly what the prayer is about. You know why? Because whenever you're praying in the Spirit, you're praying about different things. You could be praying about different people. You could be praying in for different countries. But you don't always have to know why. Well, what, what did you use? What, what did I speak out, God? What did I speak out? Humanity gets in the worst trouble whenever they have to help God out with things. I, got, can I, I can just even say my, myself here tonight, there are some things where I try to help God out and I, I, I failed miserably. Sure, no. Amen. Anytime we try to just to help God out to find, you know, we are going to help him out. <laughs> Is there something wrong with that? Yeah. He's the creator of the universe. And he's, he's created all things, but we're going to help him. Amen. Lord, help us to get a revelation of that tonight. You can't help him out when it comes to things like that. Amen? Just trust and know that God's doing the right thing. And as you're praying things out, you don't always have to know what it's about, but it's okay. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, it's all good. It's all good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the second question I have that we're going to have tonight, we're going to talk about tonight, is do you get the baptism in the Holy Spirit at the point of salvation? And the answer to that is no. You do not get that at the point of salvation. Because that is what some people teach. And that is what some people say. But scripturally, that is not right. 
You don't believe me. It's okay. Turn with me to Acts chapter 1 again. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Hallelujah. I know we were already there once. But it says, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Now, I can say here tonight that whenever I, was, whenever I got born again, it was an awesome thing. It was a great thing. And yes, to an extent, I could say it was a powerful thing. But it, this is a different type of power what we're talking about. Amen? I say it's a different type of power. Again, it's, yes, it's powerful whenever we, we, we receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and, you know, the Holy Spirit comes inside and recreates things and redoes things and rewires things in our lives. Yes, that is an awesome thing. That's a great thing. But we're talking about something different. We're going to be talking about a different experience on what happened to these, to these disciples, amen, to these followers of Christ. There was something different that happened to them. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So we see that these guys, these disciples, are up in the, the upper room, and they're waiting on this promise. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's turn to, uh, we're already in the book of Acts, chapter 2. Here we go. Thank you, Lord. If you're there, say amen. amen. I hope you didn't have to turn far because it, anyway. Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Now, how many born-again believers we have in here tonight? How many rushing mighty winds came whenever you received Jesus? Okay, I didn't see any hands. That's good. Because that doesn't happen at the point of salvation. Here we're talking about on the day of Pentecost, something happened. The Holy Spirit showed up in power. Let's, let's verse 3. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire... And it sat upon each of them. Hmm. Verse 4. And they were all filled. Everybody say all filled. all filled. With the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance or gave them the words to speak. That doesn't happen at the point of salvation. At least not that I've ever known. Amen. Amen. When you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and you come to him and you surrender your life and you're born again, that experience didn't happen. Amen? Amen. This is different. This, see, and I, the reason I'm going slow and I'm going through all this is so we can know that we don't get filled with the Spirit with this type of, with the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. All that does not happen at the point of salvation. Amen? Hallelujah. We're going to get ready for that clip here in just a minute, brother. Amen. Acts chapter 8. I got something to show you tonight from, it's good too. It is so, so good. Acts chapter 8. And we're going to go with verse 14. Jesus, hallelujah. And the word of God says, verse 14 of Acts chapter 8. It says, now when the apostles which were in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Now, you don't have to pray for people. At the, I mean, whenever it comes to salvation, yes, you say a prayer, but you don't pray over people. Whenever that comes, whenever that, whenever that happens, amen. Again, we're talking about a different experience, amen. All right, so where I was at, verse uh, 15. Who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Verse 16. For as yet he has fallen upon none of them. Only then had they been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So they were baptized in water, but they weren't baptized in the Holy Spirit. 
Now, see, you have to receive Jesus in order to get water baptized. He has to be Lord and Savior. Why? Because whenever water baptism is a symbolism of the old man going down and the new man coming up. This is something different. Hmm. Hallelujah. Verse 17. Then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. You don't lay hands on people to receive Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. At Savior. Verse 18, And when Simon saw, uh, saw that, that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. And that goes into another story, how he, he got an error right there. But he noticed that there was, the Simon, the sorcerer there, saw that there was something different. Whenever those hands were laid upon them and that they received the Holy Ghost. I got two more scriptures and then I'm going to show a clip. Amen. And it's, it's, it's awesome. Amen. Acts chapter 10. I'm going to walk you through this thing. Amen. Acts chapter 10 and verse 45. Hallelujah. For their say amen. amen. And the word of God says, And they of the circumcision which believed uh, were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Verse 46. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Yes. Hallelujah. Wow. So again, we see laying on of hands and speaking in tongues and magnifying God. That's different than a salvation experience. The last scripture I have for you on that, Acts chapter 19. Don't worry, we're going to pray for people for carpal tunnel at the end of the night. I'm just messing with you. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 19, verse, starting in verse 1. It says, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast of Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, here's, here's a key right here, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Again, we're talking about a different experience because he's saying, have you received this baptism of the Holy Spirit since you became a follower of Christ? That's what he's talking about right here. Hallelujah. And they said unto him, We have not known such as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. They didn't even know. And he said unto them, uh, Unto what were you baptized? He said, Unto John's baptism. Well, John was baptized in the water. He was talking about the promised savory. They were baptized in water, but they weren't baptized in the Holy Ghost. Or the Holy Spirit. Same exact thing. I'm gonna, we're going to set this clip up tonight. Um, speaking in tongues. I want to talk about this for just a couple of minutes before we get this, this video rolling. There is a lot out there concerning this. People get freaked out by it. People get freaked out whenever they hear people speaking in tongues. Why? Because they don't understand what it is. They're not familiar with it. I can kind of understand. If, if I was somebody and, and I never went to a church service before and I walked into a church and I heard people speaking in tongues, I wouldn't know what to do. I don't know if I'd run out the back of the church or if I would stay and see what was going on. Okay? I want to say here that as a new person who walks into a church, they don't understand everything when it comes to speaking in tongues. I totally get it. Amen? But I hope that you see that some of the scriptures I'm coming, talking about tonight is that this thing is of God. This isn't something that the devil just decided to make up just to kind of fool a bunch of people. We are seeing something totally different. There is a pastor. This is, this is uh, I don't know how old it is exactly, but there was a, uh, a news broadcast that talked about what speaking in tongues is. And what's really awesome at the end of this clip is a scientist says that, 
you'll, you'll catch it, but he says that whenever a person is speaking in tongues, it's not coming from the brain. But other types of prayer, rather it's different religions or people that are just praying in English, you can see movement in the brain. But whenever a person is speaking in tongues, there is no movement in the brain because it comes from something else. Go ahead and roll that. Thanks for watching our internet edition of Nightline. I'm Martin Bashir. Today we examine the Christian practice of speaking in tongues. Those outside the church often say it's nothing more than gibberish, but some Christians claim that it's the purest form of prayer beyond the constraints of normal language. Nightline's Vicki Mabry reports on the science of speaking in tongues. <laughs> It is an ancient practice mentioned in the Bible. St. Paul called it speaking in the tongues of angels. Jesus' apostles were first said to do it at Pentecost. The technical term is glossolalia. Most people call it speaking in tongues. There's a vast number of people out there that because they did not personally experience it or have been taught against it all their lives, there's no way they have an ability to embrace it. So that's common. We're still mocked and made fun of. That's not stopping Pastor Jerry Stoltzfus or others in his congregation at the Freedom Valley Worship Center in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania from using what they say is a God-given gift. It's almost as if I'm able to tap into God's heart and what he wants. I get goosebumps, actually. You can feel him all around you, and you can feel him speaking through the words that you're saying. It almost sounds like a foreign language, but actually, those who speak in tongues are not saying anything in any known language. With the gift of tongues, I can trust the Holy Spirit to figure out what needs to be healed. He will use what sounds like gibberish like any other language sounds like gibberish. Uh, he, he will interpret that for his purposes and his uses. We say things in our own English language, but speaking in tongues is a heavenly language that we're going to God and Jesus intercedes for us. They say they have no control over what comes out of their mouths, that they're swept up in a rush of ecstatic religious feeling and that the Holy Spirit is speaking through them. Do you hear yourself? Oh, yeah. Sometimes I think I sound like a total idiot. It's almost all in yellows and red here. At the University of Pennsylvania, Dr. Andrew Newberg is looking for an explanation for what most regard as unexplainable. I mean, it's not language. It's not regular language, at least, that would normally activate the frontal lobe. Newberg is exploring the relationship between faith and science, studying what happens in the brain during the deepest moments of faith. We're really going to look at this very, very powerful force in human history of religion and spirituality. I think we really have to take a look at how that affects our brain, what's changing or turning on or turning off in our brain. They're going to go around very fast right now. He's recently published a study of Americans speaking in tongues. Remarkably, he discovered that what's happening to them neurologically looks a lot like what they say is happening to them spiritually. Make sure we got your whole head in there. We asked Pastor Jerry Stoltzfus to come to the university to have his brain scanned while he speaks in tongues. This way we could see the experiment in action. I don't think faith is anything to be afraid of from science. Science validates faith, so bring it on. Whatever the facts are, bring it on. Just go ahead and, and you can begin prayer. And First, he's told to pray in English. Father, I pray for each of the family members involved in this study. Grant them what they are looking for in their personal lives, for, for their vision and their potential. Then he's told to speak in tongues. This is the first scan when he was in prayer speaking in English. This is the second scan 
when he is praying in tongues. Pastor Stoltzfus's scan showed that his frontal lobe, the part of the brain that controls language, was active when he prayed in English, but for the most part it fell quiet when he prayed in tongues. When they're actually engaged in this whole a very intense spiritual practice, religious practice for them, their frontal lobes tend to go down in activity, but I think it's very consistent with the kind of experience that they have because they say that they're not in charge. They're, it's the voice of God, it's the spirit of God that's moving through them. Dr. Newberg says the results were even more dramatic on subjects who were scanned without a nightline crew in the room and who were not speaking in tongues on demand as Jerry Stoltzfus had done. Study participants like Donna Morgan first listened to music, then went to where the spirit took them. When I heard about the study, I already knew within my spirit that it was going to be proven that there's a part of our brain that we have no control, that when the Holy Ghost is interceding for us, we're out of control. In earlier studies, Dr. Newberg looked at what happens in the brains of Buddhist monks meditating and Franciscan nuns praying. And it was noticeably different from what happens to tongue speakers. That's in fairly stark contrast to the people who are like the Buddhists and the Franciscan nuns who are in prayer because they are very intensely focused. And in those individuals, the frontal lobes actually increased activity. But Dr. Newberg isn't out to prove or disprove anything. He can tell you what happens in the brain, not why. Were you skeptical going into the studies? If by skeptical, the question is, is this a real phenomenon, meaning that this is truly the voice of God speaking through them, that's a much more problematic question, I think, and something that I'm not sure that we've specifically answered simply by doing our study. But for those who believe, it doesn't matter if science can find the footprints of the Holy Spirit in their 21st century brain scans. When you've experienced this, you don't really care what anybody else thinks. It's personal for, in the first place. It is something between you and God. So we don't really care if it's validated or not, but it's fascinating when it is so that people that have thought we're crazy can have something to look at to say, maybe we're not, we're still crazy. We're just not as crazy as they thought. Thank you so much. This is Vicki Mabry for Nightline in Philadelphia. The gray area where fact meets faith. Praise the Lord. So, yeah, yeah, man, praise God. You see, why I, why I like that so much is because, yes, they were correct in saying that they cannot prove that the language that is being spoken is being spoken to God. They can't prove that. But what they can say is that as, we were, as it was being spoken, it wasn't coming from here. It was coming, they didn't know where it was coming from. And that's what I'm trying to tell you tonight is that whenever you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit and whenever we talk about speaking in tongues, that is the first, an, the initial evidence that someone has the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Whenever you're speaking in tongues, it's coming from here. It's coming from the, the Holy Spirit is giving you that language to speak out. Amen? God is good. Question three, is speaking in tongues of the devil? Again, no. I have read you verse after verse through the book of Acts to see that these apostles, amen, the writers and, and, and all of these, uh, these men and disciples have experienced this thing called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Are they of the devil? No. <laughs> amen? Uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, said, I thank God that I speak tongues more than you all. Amen. Well, I would not consider the Apostle Paul of the devil because he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Amen. He's a disciple of Christ. Can someone say amen? amen. People get so hung up on speaking in tongues. And again... From, from an outsider's view, I understand why you don't get it. Amen. 
I'm just being real. I'm being honest. Amen. And you know what? Sometimes we have to think about things from other people. Not that you, um, not that you have to conform for other people. Because that's what many churches have, churches have done today. They've conformed and no longer do it because they think it's just, it's, they just, I don't know, they just sweep it under the rug and shame on them for doing it. Amen? Because it's something that's from God to us. It is indeed, it's a personal thing. But it's also something that we can use to help other people. Amen. And I'm all for that. I am all for other people getting help. I am all for God using me to do whatever he wants. I could care less. God, use me to do whatever. I don't care. I'll do it. How many times have we prayed in English and it's, and it's about us all the time? And can I just say here tonight, it's not a bad thing to pray for yourself. It's a bad thing to pray for yourself all the time. And to not focus on other people. Because regardless of how bad things are, and, and some of us, we are having some rough times. Hey, I've had rough times. You guys have had rough times. We may be going through rough times right now. Amen. By praying in the Spirit, it gets the focus off of us and onto others. Not only that, but as we read earlier, as we're praying in the Spirit, we are praying out the will of God. Sometimes whenever we pray in English, we could be praying things that are out of God's will. But by praying in the Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit using us to talk. It's, it's, it's our voice. It's His words. Hallelujah. Also, by praying in the Spirit, it'll help, it can help build you up. Jude chapter, well, there's only one chapter in Jude. Verse 20 says, But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Building yourself up in, the, in, in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Spirit can help, amen, it can, it can help lift you up. So, the question tonight is, last question, is how, how do I receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit? And can I just say, there are someone here tonight that, that you weren't baptized in the Holy Spirit coming in, and you won't be baptized in the Spirit walking out. You may think it's not for you, and you don't want it. And you know what? That's perfectly fine with God. I believe that every believer should have this gift because it's beneficial. It's because it kind of gets the selfishness off of you and it gets it onto a hurting and dying world. That's just me. Amen. I'm not I'm not here to rip anybody or to you know talk down to other people. That's, that is not my goal tonight. But I'm here to say that even though the baptism in the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues it affects you it's not necessarily just for you, but it's for other people. It's to make that prayer life deeper. It's to make that, that communication and that walk with God at a deeper level. You see, instead of walking in that kiddie pool, you could walk in the deep end. And again, I'm not here, I'm not, I'm not here to rip anybody. But I'm just telling you, this is beneficial for you. Amen? So how do I receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit? First thing I want to say, step one. First thing you got to know is the knowledge. You got to know that it's the will of God. And hopefully tonight that through the word of God, I prove that to you. That you saw that scripture after scripture after scripture, that we see that this is of God. It's for every believer who wants it. You don't have to want it. It's okay. Amen? Tell your neighbor, say, it's okay. Amen. 
Step two, salvation is the only prerequisite. You have to be saved. You have to be born again. Step three is you have to receive, receive as hands are being laid upon you. As we were reading in the book of Acts that as hands were laid upon the people that they received the Holy Ghost and that they started speaking in tongues and giving utterance. It's the Holy Spirit who gives you the words. And step four is to expect to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit gives you those words. Can I say here tonight that that speaking in tongues is something completely different than that you would ever in your wildest dreams be used to for the first time? It sounds gibberish, as, as, as the pastor was saying. It sounds weird. It's not familiar. I understand this. I get it. I remember, uh, as I'm getting ready to close, praise team, if you want to come on up. Uh, if you're not, all right. Um, I was born again in November of 1999, and later on in November, my pastor, uh, I, I was curious about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I was curious about it. I've heard people speaking in tongues, and can I say I was, uh, I was raised uh, in a church, in a Pentecostal church, so, I mean, hearing people speak in tongues really wasn't something that freaked me out, but, because um, so, I was used to hearing, but I didn't know I didn't know anything about I didn't really know anything about it. And, and my pastor said, is this something that you want? And I said, well, yeah. I said, I don't understand everything, but yeah, it's something I want. So after a service, he prayed for, after a service, he prayed for me, and he prayed that I might receive it. And you know what? I, I, I didn't get it. It's not for the fact that, you know, that, that the Lord wasn't there or anything. I just, I don't know if I was really in that mode to receive it. But in, in November of 2000, we had a, uh, we were having this awesome, crazy revival that just went on for weeks and weeks and weeks. And uh, the pastor's son, we were like in this prayer circle, it was a really big prayer circle. And um, he says, you know, start, start speaking, start praying. If you feel like praying in English, pray in English. If you feel like, you know, feel like praying in the spirit, pray in the spirit. And I heard people, you know, speaking in tongues and I was like, man, you know, I, I kept thinking to myself, well, man, pastor prayed for me. Why, why didn't I get it? And so the pastor's son, he grabbed my hand, and he starts, you know, he has my hand, and he starts going in this circle, you know. And I start just, man, I start feeling, <laughs> feeling God just, it was just, oh, my gosh. It was like a wet blanket just got dropped on my head. And I just, I was like, oh, my. you know, I was going like this, and bam, it, it happened. And he, he didn't pray that I would receive it because it was, had already been prayed before. A few weeks earlier, but I that night I spoke in tongues for over three hours. I wouldn't stop because it just it it just kept kept coming, man. I just kept speaking and kept speaking and kept speaking, and uh, it, it was it was really cool, you know, because God is cool, right? Amen. So if there are some of you, I want everybody just to stand up tonight. Pastor, if you want to come on up, come on up. And prayer team, if there are a few of you that want to come up as well tonight. If there's anybody in here who would like to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, this night is for you. You don't have to receive it. You can go to heaven without ever receiving it. You could be a, a great Christian without having this experience. But through the word of God, I showed you that there are many good benefits to have this. Uh, it helps your prayer life. It helps, it helps you as a Christian. Uh, it helps build you up. Uh, there are so many things that, that, that is a benefit to the body of Christ and to you. If this is something that you desire and that you want, I want you just to come down here tonight. I'm not going to beg anybody. I'm not going to prod you. This is simply choice. And you're saying, this is something I want. This is something I really, really want. I want you just to come on down. Don't feel, don't feel bad. Don't feel, you know, no anxiety. Don't worry about any of that. Just come down tonight. This is your night if you'd like to receive that tonight. Hallelujah. 
if there are you here tonight and you say, you know what? My well is dry. You know what? It's, it's been a while. It's been, you know, I haven't been praying in the spirit or praying, you know, like I should be. I know I should be doing it more and I'm not. I want you to come down here as well tonight because God is going to refill you.